All right, so there are a few things that can make your computer run slow. One could be that it's low on space on your hard drive. Um, if you've used up over three quarters of your hard drive, um, it's time to start moving some of that data to an external source to save it if you haven't done so already, which you should be doing, uh, doing regular backups to free up some of that space. The other thing that you, sometimes your computer might just be low on the amount of RAM that's in your system, could be keeping it from running at its optimal performance. So if your computer does have a higher capacity for RAM, that's another thing that you can think about is upgrading the RAM in the system. Also the type of hard drive, maybe upgrading that regular traditional hard drive to a solid state drive. So part of this process is also gonna to be to help clean out your system to help it run as efficiently as possible. And I, hopefully I'll explain that to you uh, along the way so you understand what you're doing and understand the why behind what you're doing. All right, let's get started. Background. We're going to keep our antivirus software disabled. We're going to hold the Windows key and the R. This will bring up our run dialog box. And from here, we're going to type in the percent sign, which is the number five in the percent sign, and the word temp, T E M P, and then the percent sign again. This is going to open up our temp folder. And from here, we're going to highlight all of these. So we're going to hit Control A. And then we're going to right click and then delete. All right. Now it's saying that we can't delete some of this stuff because it's open or it's in use. That's perfectly fine. We're going to click the box that says do this for all current items. We're going to hit skip. All right. And once those files are deleted, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next process. We're going to close that window. Now, if you've never done this process before, you might have several gigs of temp folders and files that need to be removed from the system. These are folders that open up as used in an application and might be stored there even if the computers remove that program from the system. So yours might still be running and that's perfectly fine. That's going to free up quite a bit of space. The next thing we're going to do is going to hit Windows and the R key again, which is going to bring up our run dialog. And we're going to type in the word prefetch, P-R-E-F-E-T-C-H. Now you might get a warning that pops up on your computer that says, hey, are you sure you want to access this? This is only for people that know what they're doing. That's perfectly fine. We know exactly what we're doing. So what we're going to do is in this prefetch folder, we're going to do the same thing. Control A, highlight all that software. We're going to right click on it and then we're going to delete. All right, do this for all current items. We're going to hit skip because we're actually using that particular file within the system. All right, now once that's done, and like I said, you might have quite a bit of files in that system, so you might still be going. Just go ahead and pause the video and then pick back up. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit the Windows key and R, and we're going to type in the word control panel, and then we're going to hit enter. All right, and then we're going to click on the tab that says System and Security. Then we're going to click on the word System. And then we're going to go to Advanced System Settings. All right, then we're going to click on Performance and hit Settings. And then we're going to click on the Advanced tab. And then we're going to change the amount of system RAM or virtual memory that the computer has available to use. Now, if you have less than five or 10 gigs left after, even after deleting all these files that we don't need in the system, I don't recommend doing this. So we're going to hit change. And we're going to uncheck the box that says automatically manage page filing for drives. And we're going to click on the box that says custom size. Because we need to turn gigabytes to megabytes. So you can see on this part of my computer, I'm going to go ahead and click on this area so that you can see. I've got four gigs of RAM, 3.88 gigabytes usable, right? So 1024 megabytes equals one gigabyte. So what we're going to do, we're going to take 
1024 and we've got 4 gigs right we're going to multiply that times 4 which gives us 4096 now we're going to multiply that times 2 8192 so going back to our performance screen for our virtual memory the initial size we're going to put is going to be 8192 the maximum allotted is going to be 8192 and then we're going to hit set and then hit OK all right now it's going to tell you that the changes that you made can't be done until you restart your computer perfectly fine hit OK hit apply and then hit OK and then we'll hit OK again we're going to actually say restart later because there's one more step that we're going to do to help it run better. We're going to hit the Windows key, the R key again, and this time we're going to type in MS config. When that opens up, we're going to go to our boot menu. Then we're going to click on advanced options. Now what we're going to do on the boot menu, we're going to put maximum memory. Remember, we went and adjusted the amount of virtual memory the computer uses to start up. We doubled that. So now we're going to let it use the maximum amount available. And then we're going to select the number of processors in this area here. Click number of processors and click the down arrow. And we have, this is a quad core computer, so we're going to click four. All right, and then click OK. It's very important that you don't do this process. If your computer is maxed out on RAM, skip this step and go to the next one. Don't change the processor application and just select maximum amount of memory available. It's very important that when you select the number of processors that you select the correct number. If you've got a dual core processor, then you'll have two. Just because it says eight doesn't mean that I can use all eight. This is a quad core processor and for every core of the processor there's two which gives you that eight available to find out what you've got in your system let's hit the windows and the r key again and we're going to type in the words control panel or you can go to your control panel if you're using windows 7 or a different version of windows we'll click on system and security we'll click on system and then on the tab, we're going to go to the device manager on the left. And then we're going to scroll down to where it says processors and hit that arrow. And you can see here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cores for the four processors. Don't select the incorrect number, you'll have unfavorable results for your computer. Let me close this screen. So if I were to select eight, my computer would not boot. The operating system would tell me that there's the settings are incorrect and we cannot load the operating system because the settings are improperly configured so if you're unsure how many processes you have do not check this box alright so I know that there's four cores in this processor and it's got the four selected I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna hit apply and then hit OK. Then it's going to say, ask me to do these changes or exit and restart. I'm going to exit without the restart so that we can do the next part of this process to get us going. We're going to hit the Windows key, the R key again. And this time we're going to type in MS config. And in the MS config window, we're going to click in the box that says startup. Alrighty. We have to open the task manager to get there. That's perfectly fine. Now, what we're going to see here, I'm going to maximize this screen for you. What we're going to see here are programs that, as soon as you turn on your computer, start running. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that's enabled in this section. Um, there's some stuff that we don't need running that we're going to go ahead and disable. Now, things like our video drivers, we want that to load. But the persistence module from Intel Corporation, we're going to go ahead and disable that. We don't need that to run at startup. Our video stuff, we want that to run the Microsoft OneDrive. 
I don't want that running at startup. I want that to run when I need it. The iTunes helper. And you can see the, the startup impact that it gives. We're going to click disable. We don't want that running at startup. The Intel IGFX tray module and the HKCMD module, we're going to keep that there. CCleaner, we don't want that running at startup. We want that running when we need it. Your Catalyst Control Center, this is this for different uh, graphics applications. We're going to leave that alone. The Browser Plugin Helper, we don't need that running at startup. Avira Connect, that's in has to deal with our antivirus software. Yes, we want that running and getting the latest updates as, as it needs it. The apps pointing device driver, that's our track point and our trackpad. Want that running. Avira again, we want that running. The Java update scheduler, we don't need that running. So if it's not a, a system component that need, helps our computer run, we don't want it running at startup. Sonic Solutions, I know that that's uh, the software that runs my burning software I don't want that running and synaptics touchpad we want that running that's perfectly fine all right so once you've done that we're going to hit the close button and then hit OK all right now we're going to restart our system to apply all those changes that we made power restart <laughs> 